Yeah, you have, mate. You're exactly right. Uh, so moving on, then, let me just go to this next uh, few questions. Oh, got through some stuff today, haven't we, mate? Right. Uh, here we are. Uh, who told me? Uh, choose it. I call to the. Oh, so what? No, which is the number one? Who would you say is the best pound for pound guy in the world at the moment, then, Terry? Canelo. You say it's Canelo. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Canelo is probably. Is he a four weight champion? Nah, there's a question mark over the fielding win, but you know, Canelo will give it to him. Yeah. Uh, so Canelo's number one. Who have you got number two? Loma or Baturbia or Usyk? <laughs> Yeah, you put Lomachenko third. Yeah. It's, uh, I can explain it. It's interesting times in boxing at the moment because this is how I look at it. I think there's a lot of people josh jostling for position at the top table, but they're not stars in their own right. For example, Errol Spence, he's in everybody's top ten, isn't he? Top five, yeah, but he doesn't seem to uh, be getting the, I don't know, the big fights. Is he, get, is he getting big fights? Well, who, 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 well, okay, you're the boxer guy. Who are his last four opponents? Well, he's, ju he's just for, uh, me, 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 me head's gone, I forgot who he's just for. He just fought a guy on a PBC show, and Warwick Garcia, not uh, Thurman, was it? Porter, that way, he just beat Porter, hasn't he? Yeah. He just beat Porter. He beat Kelbrook. Garcia. Beat Garcia. So you'd have to have him in there, wouldn't you, Errol Spence? Yeah, he's, he's just walked from a car crash. We had a scratch on him. Well, he's got a few scratches on him. He just hasn't got any broken bones, mate. No broken bones. He's just got, he's, he's just got some stitches on his on his face, the side of his head, hasn't he? But he's all right, isn't he? So, would you put him in with Kel Brook again? Oh, well, if Kel can show me something, then yeah. Yeah. Do you think Kel Brook will fight again? Because Den, Den don't think he's going to fight again. I think for Kel Brook, if you gave him something like a Crawford fight, he could get up for that. If you gave him a Danny Garcia fight, he could get up for that. I don't think you could give him another fight like the Serrano. Do you see what I mean? He did well against uh, somebody though in his, one of his last fights, didn't he? Yeah, but. Serafa. Oh, yeah, Kel's knocking on a bit now, yeah. 33, 34, he's a Yeah. 33, Kel. Yeah, so he's on the way down. He's on the way down, yeah. He's gone back to Dominic Ingle as well, but there's a rumour going around that he's not uh, he's not training again, so I don't know. Before the, I, I feel sorry for him because like, someone in his team should be giving him direction. I don't think there is any direction in his career. Do you think that Kel Brook could have been our Terry Norris and, uh, and it were all ruined when Christopher Eubank Jr. thought that he had Eddie Hearn over a barrel? And Eddie played a trump card with Kel Brook to save the show. Do you think that Eddie Eddie Earn didn't have any respect for Kel Brook? He just thought about the money and told Kel, "Well, if you get beat, you still got your title." Do you think that's what happened? I I, I do, and I think uh, I have it on decent authority that Dominic Ingle had a plan which said, "Listen, you're not going to do more than five rounds in this fight." Go and have a go. If you can't hurt him or cut him, I'm going to throw the towel in. And that's what they did. What I heard. You know, 
know, save Kel for another day. The downside of it was actually that Kel broke his eye socket. Had he not broken his eye socket, that would have been the perfect military operation. And the other, the other downside of it was Errol Spence. Uh, the Golovkin did he break one and the other one were badly bruised and Errol Spence finished the other one off didn't he in the next fight yeah. so then it's more or less game over then it for Kel now he'll have all mental issues and all that won't he yeah do you really want to be up there getting your face punched in knowing that your eye socket might be fragile but he ended up making what it about 7 million from both fights so is that him done now as regards a pay-per-view fighter because he's had three pay-per-views now, hasn't he? Uh, Frankie Gavin. Fights, so any, anything like Crawford or even a Spence rematch if Spence needs a tune-up to get his way back, why not? Or Danny Garcia. Yeah. Pacquiao. Look, what can do all of these things, but, you know, that's what he needs to get out of bed, if you ask me. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about all these boxing stars at the moment starting podcasts like Spencer Oliver with Jake Wood, uh, who's, I think he's done amateur boxing, I know he's been an amateur boxer, there's Matthew Macklin's got one out with somebody else, they all, they all seem to be doing podcasts but years ago they, they were all used to hammer us lot didn't they for it, do you remember? No. They all thought that these names would carry over. I feel for these guys. Like, you look at what Matthews wants doing, it's not doing great numbers because it's too late to be jumping on it. People know who delivers quality podcast content already. They know. We know, the hardcore fans, don't we? Pardon? We, the hardcore fans, know. I think everyone does. Like, when, I'm, when I'm out, it shows that people go, oh, you're the, you're the podcast guy. It, it spreads pork. And you can't just be Macklin and come and do this because there's a real art to it. You've got to know what the fans want to hear. So the fans yeah. want to hear you being sensible most of the time, but then they also want to know that you're prepared to open up the bonnet and let them know what really goes on in boxing. Now, yeah. Macklin can't because he's tied to Sky. So he can't be honest. He can't say, look, this is what really goes on. So yeah. people always look for the outlet gives them that inside track. Do you think that Matthew Macklin, because of his ties to MTK, has got a little bit of power and nobody dare rock the boat? I, I think Macklin's an intelligent enough guy to find a way to get his message out, whether it's him or someone else, he knows how to do it. Mm. But he's a he's a diplomat. You know, he, he he's he's out for making money and I don't blame him. Yeah, do you think that there's a lot of, I don't know, I, I know what I think, because I, I get raged about it, I'm very passionate about boxing, and I get emotional and I shouldn't do, but do you think we're going down the path now where fighters are not fighting who they should do and these people are having to nar narrate scripts around what's going on and, that, and that, it's how they're slipping all this KSI and Logan Paul, Joe Weller KSI and now we're hearing Robbie Williams and Liam Gallagher and uh, and that could be a headline show with world title fights on underneath. Is this now a circus now and are we being, is, has somebody stood on a balcony, unzipped the flies and he's just hosing us down while we're underneath, is that what's happening at the moment? Alright, so let me ask you a question, Russ. Yeah. When you were selling cars... Yeah. If you were selling 200 cars a week... <laughs> yeah. Would you give a shit about doing a podcast? You wouldn't, would you? No. You'd be like, you know what, mate? I'm too busy with this. Yeah, that's what... I won't be doing 200 no, a year. <laughs> if boxing was really booming, if boxing was really that successful... Yeah. No, and this is why I'm starting to think that maybe this does own thing. It's not doing as good as what Eddie Earn's making out. They've not released any numbers if you go onto their their website. They haven't released any. Now, Earn's a numbers guy. He likes to shout it from the rooftops. Why is he not mentioning does own numbers? When Joshua did uh, X amount of buys against Vladimir, he was shouting it all over IFL. 
he has not mentioned the word about the zone numbers. Do you think they've spent a lot of money and it's come back and bite them in arse? And they're having to do this now to make the numbers up. Do you think they're having to try other things and think outside the box? So Bit like me with my billboards. <laughs> yeah, billboard. I know, yeah. The billboard didn't say Carl Froch is the greatest human being ever. I know, yeah. I love Carl Froch, don't I? I don't know. You love your average boxers from Nottingham. <laughs> I'll tell him. Do you think Tyron Booth would have beaten Carl Froch? Tyron Booth? I don't yeah. think Tyron Booth will... Uh, I, don't, I hope they don't meet anyway because Carl could end up losing his job at Sky if they ever bump into each other, I think. <laughs> so, no, but getting back to the question, what, what, do you, what do you think? So, it, there's only subscribers, right? That's what Hearns been brought in to do. The boxing content is kind of incidental to what they're trying to achieve, what they're trying to achieve in subscribers. From what I can see, the numbers aren't where they need on any of the platforms, ESPN have the same problem. And that's mainly because they don't have any other sports that you'd want to shell the money out for. So yeah. until they get the NFL, the basketball, the ice hockey, they're always going to struggle. Now, add to that the fact that in their first year, they overspent getting people like Tevin Farmer, Devin Haney, Golovkin, Canelo, massively overspent. And from what it seems they didn't get these fights guaranteed in the contracts so now it's an absolute nightmare trying to make Canelo versus Golovkin because neither man has to take the fight Joshua lost they can't get Wilder on board so there's so much more money outside of the zone that it's almost hard for them to justify themselves as a, as a standalone platform at the moment and I think that's what they're struggling with and so I think this year you'll see Hearn be a bit more humble in terms of the fights and the locations he chooses I don't think we'll see those big name signings that we saw the first year and the second year I think by the end of by the end of 2020 we will know whether the zone is going to be a success or not one of the things that's really interesting is <coughs> excuse me so BT secured the rights for the Champions League I think it was again until 2024 and so you look at the zone and you go, well, how are they going to get into the UK for them to be a, a seamless partner for her? And I don't think they can at the moment, unless they buy BT Sport. So we'll see. And it's all very interesting at the moment. But what we know is times are tough in terms of subscribers and times are tough in terms of costs. Yeah, I think they might have spent a lot of money, but I don't think he'll have spent any of his money because he's very shrewd. I mean, it looks like he could be bankrupting them. I mean, he, he could really turn... This could all either take off and be the next big thing, or it could blow up in Eddie Earn's face and he could really turn people off boxing, couldn't he? I mean, they could end up putting it up to, say, 30 quid a year from now, pay-per-views, and it could just be like a circus and somebody could get hurt on one of these shows. I mean, what... There could be lawsuits. There's some that's got to give sooner or later because there'll be people doing the best to try and stop these shows and mess them up. We know what it's like, don't we, behind the scenes. But I, I just I worry for boxing where it's going at the moment, Terry. And you know, I was a big Eddie Hearn fan up until uh, he started with all this Joshua nonsense. And and I have a bad. People keep asking me, "Oh, why have you turned on Eddie?" Look. How Carl Frotcher's career petered out at the end left a bad taste in my mouth. You know, when he had to pack in halfway through a camp with the Chevez fight. It left a bad taste in my mouth when Bob Arum uh, made a... He said, if you put if you go through with that fight, Frotch against Chevez, I'm going to sue you, Eddie, because he's got a fight left on my contract and I want a million dollars to release him or whatever. And... Eddie Hearn more or less didn't want it to come out his end at pot and Chevez didn't so why should Carl and it all got petered out didn't it with like an, an elbow injury I mean the truth will come out one day but it left a bad taste in my mouth whereas Frotch put him on the map and he didn't get the send off that I felt he should have got with Chevez you know in Vegas 
But then again, you could say he got a good send off at, at Wembley, couldn't he? But I always feel that I, I, I always felt that he he needed something else, Carl. You know, to, I thought he deserved another fight after that. I did honestly, but but no, I don't like where boxing's going. We had this Joshua rammed down our throats for years. And we were all screaming that he's not as good as what they're saying he is. Lennox Lewis was saying it. You know, his, his best wins are Vlad, an, an old Vladimir. An old, old Vladimir. And it were life and death. I mean, if Vladimir can do that to him, what's Wilder going to gonna do? So I just feel that we've been not sold a lie, but this man has done 7,000 interviews in 16 months, right? That's like 12 a day interviews constant interviews he's never at home he's abroad all the time he's 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 like he's on a mission to spend as much dad's own money as he can and get his own cut and then it's either going to work or not he's earning mega money 45.4 million he earned last year alone all right he's earning mega money and he's going to earn more this year but he always, he, he said that it's not going to be forever. So is this why he's like working himself to death? Because all he's doing is talking into a camera and flying about all over. It's not back-breaking work down pit like my old man had to do, is it? It's not a labourer a, in a factory, is he? I just think that sooner or later something's got to give with this Dazon thing. And I hope boxing fans are not the, casuals, the casualties out of it. Because if you remember... When Chris Eubank got beat for the second time against Collins, he bailed out Barry Hearn, didn't he? Frank Warren said he bailed out, left boxing in a mess. Now, is Eddie Hearn going to bail out once the money's dried up? Can he go back to just a normal sky with no Anthony Joshua and no stars after earning all these millions, or will he just go do something else? Is he in it for the long haul? What do you think? Yeah. And then that kind of died when he retired after beating Vitali. Yeah. And then boxing was kind of dead until David came back. David A. David brought David Hay. Dave, Carl Frotch, David A, all that real 2001 World Championship lot, wasn't it? 2002, real class of 2002, wasn't it? Anthony Small, Spencer Fearon. <laughs> Mm. And Ricky Hatton as well, let's not forget Ricky Hatton. Dennis Hobson played a big part in that with David A as well, didn't he, with Frank Maloney? Mm. And so what I'm saying is, it always does as it goes up, and then it's like, ah, we don't care about it. And then someone gives us a reason to care it again. Yeah, David A gave me a reason to care about boxing years ago. I, I, obviously, I, were, I followed Frotch from the beginning, but David A were, were started round about then. And he was just icing people. And I don't just mean, he was like Wilder-esque. You know, what he was doing to people, wasn't he? When he started. And so, yeah, so, so now fast forward to 2019. We're probably on the downside of a cycle that started with Frotch Groves. Yeah. Now we someone else that comes through that will get us all excited again mm. but I think we're, we're probably on the downside of things at the moment and all Hearn's trying to do is prop up something that's trying to go down yeah yeah that's what he's trying to do basically and he's using other people's money to do it like for example the EIS is lottery funded all his fighters train up there but it's for amateurs but they're training up there because McCracken's Obviously, the director up there. Now, Sky are giving him the platform. Then you've got other people giving him the platform. IFL, Behind the Gloves, Boxing Social, 
all those sort of people and letting him have a voice do you feel that eddie hearn is drowning out everybody else and just making it about him because all he seems to do is interviews daily constantly constant like i said google google him it's over seven thousand in 16 months on actual footage and interviews or clips seven thousand and some that's a lot of interviews but it's only 12 a day for for 16 months but he's constantly out there, non-stop, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? Is he drowning everybody out? Is he getting the point across? And and you believe, you throw so much mud at, at something, eventually it all sticks and we believe it. It's a bit like Michael Caine, isn't it? And Danny Dyer. We're all told that they're great actors, but they've been in loads of films, but how many films has Danny Dyer been in that have won an Oscar? And how many has Michael Caine been in that have won an Oscar? I think it's one in it. Danny Dyer's not an Oscar winner, but they keep throwing it all out. And like that was that other guy from Down Essex. He's always seems to be in the films when I look on telly. Craig Fairbass. He's been in about sixty films. <laughs> you know him as an actor, but has he been in out that's any good? See where I'm coming from. We're being fed a load of rubbish, and I think, and he's just spinning the yarn. I don't think this matchroom Germany, matchroom Italy, and. They're doing a Finland one, aren't they, soon? I don't think it's all going to... I don't think it's going to amount to anything. I think it's just, they just got... They can do it because they can. Do you see where I'm coming from? Dale Nichols made a good... Oh, no, Smido made a good point the other day on channel. Matchroom and Sky, they're all involved together. It's 25 quid pay-per-view. Cos they can. And we're in that this society now where they're asking themselves... Would I pay that extra fiver to watch this fight? I asked Dennis on channel last week in a, in a restaurant and he went, yeah, I'd pay it. It's only a fiver. While ever we've got that mentality, people are going to get away with it, aren't they? Do you see where I'm coming from? I care about boxing. It's a big part of my life. And if without it, I don't know what I'd do because I'd give up, give up a lot to do this, to get involved, to, to see there's no pot or goal that end at rainbow for me. But there is for them. But they're diluting the product now, aren't they? Is the product diluted? Say that again, Russ. Is the product diluted at the moment? Look at the show last night. Cal that show in Liverpool last night, on paper, was a shocker, wasn't it, really? Yard. Yeah, is that is Craig Richards that getting shafted? What was that? Is Craig Richards getting shafted? Oh, sorry, you're breaking up. Is Craig Richards getting shafted, Terry? You know Craig Richards. Do you believe he's not being treated correctly? Hold on a second, no, I'm on, I'm speaking I'm speaking into my phone while I'm looking into the camera. I've got is that better? I have to put it on speaker so that fans can hear it. Is Craig Richards being shafted by his promoter, I said. Oh, of course he is. Who's his promoter by the way? Is it Eddie? Yeah, it's Ed. Yeah, yeah. So because he, he doesn't seem to get many chances, does he, Craig Richards at the moment? He always seems to be Is he managed by Dean White? Peter Sims. Peter Sims manager. Well, I wonder why they can't seem to work something out for them. Who's his trainer? Peter Sims. 
Peter Sims. Peter, I wonder why they're not getting chances for Craig Richards then, because he's a decent fighter. They got him on Joshua uh, pay-per-view, didn't they, in Cardiff? Well, they're not investigating him, you see what I mean? They're not really pushing him, which they should be doing. Yeah, they're pushing other people like... Luke Campbell and your crawlers and people like that. I mean, I've heard today that Ricky Burns is going to have a pension fight next year. Ricky Burns. Like Crawler. They're going to have a final, the final time to see a free weight world champion and all that. Uh, but when they should be put, I know when they should be putting stuff into Craig Richards and why aren't they signed Anthony Yard? I thought they were going to sign him at one point. They kept talking about it, didn't they? Chris Eubank Jr., what's going to happen to him next? Is he going to go back and work with Eddie? I mean, his sister's getting married to Frank next year. Frank with sports. Are you going to the wedding? No, I'm not going to the wedding, but... I text Frank, I, I have crack with him. He, ju he just don't take boxing serious. He just... Uh, he's pretty laid back, actually. I quite, he's quite likeable, actually. But uh, he's a Hearn man, isn't he? So, and, you know, they pay his wages and good luck to him. But I'd like to see Chris Eubank Jr. fight Billy Joe again. I reckon it could be a good fight. I'd like to see Craig Richards go to super middle and fight Eubank Jr. Nah, Craig can't do super middle. Can't he do it? Well, Eubank won't step up, would he? He's, a, he's, a, he's only a blown up middle. I'd like to see John Ryder against Eubank Jr. That's a good fight. Southport yeah. against uh, Eubank Jr. I like to see Fudge come back and fight Golovkin. No, nah, he's had his nose done and he's not going to come back. Unless it's stupid money. But no, he's not, he's, he's alright. He, he's not come back. He's too busy with his restaurant. Alto. Shout out Alto in Nottingham. But, uh, in the centre? It's in centre, yeah. Smack in centre, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, alright. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting times, isn't it, at the moment? Very, very, very interesting times at the moment. Exciting times ahead, as Mr. B. <laughs> exciting times ahead. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. We know a song about that, don't we? <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I'm just fearful for the sport. But I don't want to be on a downer because that that just makes me feel down if I, if I speak about negative things. But... Looking at it from the outset, what happened last night is a kick in the teeth for boxing. John Ryder won the fight, clearly. Everybody in the arena knew. I mean, Chalk flew up. It was on the line. Chalk flew up. Well, John Ryder won last night. He didn't get the decision. And we're left with Paul Smith, Tony Bellew, and Crawler and Joe Gallagher, Eddie and all them people... Andy Lee to write the narrative to smooth it all over and then next week it's all forgot about and John Ryder's you know he's at home all busted up and or whatever depressed and he has to pick his scent up whereas Callum Smith goes on to fight for millions in a pay-per-view against Billy Joe or Canelo I mean how messed up is it these judges are messing with people's lives the only way around it is to sit them in booths sit them in a booth I put headphones on so they can't hear the crowd. That's what we need to see. You have the same problem. Like, there'll always be scorecards we don't agree with. That's just the nature of boxing. Yeah. 